Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I built my friend this mudroom bench. Technically, it's like a built-in, but I built it as one single unit so that we can easily transport it from my shop to her house so they'll screw it to the studs and it'll be built in at that point but as of now it's just one solid single piece despite the fact that this is quite heavy it was an easy build and i've got the printable plans for you linked in the video description but if you're ready to see how it all came together let's go So if you know me at all, you probably guessed that this project included some plywood. So the first thing that I did here was start cutting things down. I've provided the plywood cut diagram in the plans linked below, but to make things easy, I cut all of my pieces for the bench to 18 inches square. This allowed me to set up my Craig rip cut to 18 inches and then make all of these cuts without having to adjust anything. To make the best use of the plywood for this build, I first ripped an 18 inch wide strip off of the short side of one of my sheets. Then I set the rest aside to use later and headed to grab my second sheet. Now if you're interested in the shop cat, he will be making his appearance several times throughout the video, so keep an eye out. Now from my second sheet, I ripped a strip off of the long side and again, set the rest to the side to come back to later. Then I ripped these two strips down into seven total 18 inch square panels. Okay, so now that I have my seven 18 inch square pieces of plywood, this is what I had left, the offcuts. I need some top braces for the bench seat that I'm building. I need six of them. These pieces were left over, so they should be 18 inches long this way. So I can rip this in half and get two strips. And then this is 18 inch long this way, so I can rip this into four pieces and get six strips total. So I'm just going to rip these on the table saw. You could rip these with a circular saw if you're like super careful, but if you have a table saw, this obviously is going to be a little quicker. With these pieces for the bench trimmed down, I moved on to sanding everything well before assembling. And speaking of sanding, if you're interested in my painting process, I did actually include it in the video this time after many requests. So keep an eye out for that a little later. I used pocket holes to assemble this simple bench cabinet, so I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of the top support strips and into the ends of three of the square panels. If you'd like to know how to set up and use a pocket hole jig, I've got a detailed guide linked in the video description below. I measured and marked a line three and three eighths inches up from the bottom edge of the side panels and lined up the bottom panel at this mark. Then I assembled the bench using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Each of the three sections of the bench will have these two support strips at the top and these are there to obviously hold the top of the bench cabinet together but also to install the bench seat later. I worked my way along, adding the pieces for each section until the bench box was complete. Next was adding a face frame to it. I made the face frame from 1x3s and a 1x4. I put the 1x4 on the bottom and then used the 1x3s for the top and the dividers. Again, I used pocket holes to assemble this face frame, so I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of the divider pieces, then assembled using pocket hole screws. Thank you. 
Before gluing anything, I made sure to first test fit the face frame to make sure it would fit over the front of the bench. And thank goodness it did because I didn't have enough material to rebuild it. Then I glued and brad nailed it in place. Because I was painting this project, I wanted to make sure that things were nice and smooth. So after it was installed, I puttied over the nail holes and all of the joints. And I'll come back later and sand it smooth. For now, I grabbed the plywood that I had set aside from earlier. These will become the back panel. However, since this bench is wider than four foot, which is how wide a sheet of plywood is, that meant that I was going to have to piece the back panel together. So I cut one large piece that will cover two sections of the bench. Then I cut another piece from the other sheet to make up the difference to cover the entire back side of the bench. Okay, so I've got the one solid panel for these two sections over here, and then I've got one panel to cover the rest of it. I want this back panel to function as like one unit, so I need to attach them. And the best way I can figure out how is to do pocket holes. Um, and with the pocket holes, I will probably put them on the front side and then I can cover them with trim later. So that way, not that you're gonna see the back, but that way at least the back will be clean and you won't see the pocket holes because they'll be covered with trim. So to keep things more stable, I wanted to join these pieces together. So I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes along one end of one of the pieces, then used wood glue and pocket hole screws to join them together. At this point, Danny had come home from work and wondered what I was doing. I think he was kind of confused, but he offered to help nonetheless. <laughs> I test fit the bench to make sure that they were in fact the same width. Then I let the glue dry overnight. The next day, I got back to work and installed the back panel to the bench. I pre-drilled all of my holes to prevent splitting the plywood and then put a couple of screws in on each side. Then I flipped it over and added some along the bottom panels, then flipped it back and added some along the top. Adding this large panel onto the back made the bench very top heavy, so I had to be careful not to push it or it would tilt backward pretty easily. The next part was adding the bench seat. So I cut my bench seat from a partial sheet of plywood that I already had in the shop. Now, as a note about this, besides the bench seat, you can build this entire project with just two sheets of plywood. But if you cut your seat from plywood as well, you'll need a third sheet. Now I use a bunch of plywood in my shop, so I don't mind having scraps, but if you didn't wanna buy a whole sheet just to cut the seat from, you can certainly just glue up a solid wood panel using one by material instead. I test fit the bench seat, but I didn't install it just yet. I wanted to be able to paint this without worrying about the seat being in the way, so I used it as a spacer block for adding the trim on top, but didn't screw it in place yet. Now, speaking of the trim on the back side, that's where I went next. I trimmed out the back using one by four boards and I used wood glue and brad nails to secure each piece. I made sure to leave room at the bottom for the bench seat to slide into later. Now you can get as creative as you want with the trim, but I obviously kept it pretty simple. Once all the pieces were on, I puttied the nail holes in all of the joints, just like I did for the bench seat earlier. Because I was painting this, I tried to prep everything to be as smooth and even as possible, so it'll look as seamless as possible once it's finished. Okay, so I just laid this thing over on the ground and used my orbital sander to just sand all of the putty smooth, sand all the joints as smooth as I could get them with paint. Those little uneven spots where the boards meet, they will show up. 
so it's kind of critical when you're painting to make sure to sand cat hush the final touch before finish was adding the crown molding around the top Where this is going to be going, this left side is going to go in a corner, so it'll be butted against a wall on the left side and on the back. So in order to be able to butt it flush against the wall, I'm not going to put crown molding on this side. I'm just going to put crown molding across the front and on the right side. So it's just going to like wrap around the corner. Bub, stop. Stop. I've linked a detailed guide on cutting crown molding in the video description, but once the pieces were cut, I used wood glue and brad nails to secure them, then puttied over the seam and the nail holes. Then it was time to paint. And after many requests, I'm not going to skip over this part. Okay, so it's painting day. The last couple videos that I did um, where I painted something, I actually just like made a joke about it that I snapped my fingers and it was instantly painted and I didn't share the process just because I hate it. I hate painting. But I had a lot of requests that I share my painting process as well. So I'm going to prime first and I'll show you what I'm using. So I actually ran out of paint liners, paint tray liners. I have one left and I'm gonna save it for the paint. So for the primer, I literally just took a grocery bag and just stuck it in my tray here. Using Kills 3 and FYI, I've sanded the project to like 220 grit, I think it was. Usually when I'm priming or painting, I'll start by simply brushing the corners and all of the things that I can't roll. So in this case, I brushed primer onto the molding and into the corners of the trim. Then I used a trim roller to roll primer on all of the flat surfaces. My only advice here is just to pay attention and smooth out any streaks that you see before it dries. I just applied one coat of primer to the back panel and on the sides and the front of the bench where I'm going to be painting. I didn't paint the inside of the bench. Once the primer was dry to the touch, I hand sanded the entire piece with 220 grit sandpaper. Sometimes I use 400 grit instead and that works fine too. If you ever run your hands over freshly primed wood, it feels a little chalky and kind of rough. Lightly sanding it just kind of smooths that out a little. So while the primer was drying, I walked the dog. It, it's cold outside, so I added the hat. Um, but now we are going to caulk. So what I'm using is this DAP Alex Flex trim caulk. I don't know, it's, it's what I had on hand. It works fine, I've used it before, um, but I've also used other stuff too. So it's not like you have to use a sp specific type. Anyway, basically the purpose of the caulk is just to make cleaner joints. So I'll apply them on the inside corners of all of this trim. So that way if there's any boards that were a little bit warped or whatever and they didn't sit perfectly flat against the plywood back, this will seal that like gap so that when I paint, it'll look seamless and nice and clean. My dad always told me that you never close a knife you didn't open. So always be sure to close the knives that you do open so somebody else can use them. I don't know why I just told you that. I apply caulk on the inside corners to make for a cleaner paint job. You just apply a small bead, then I just like to smooth it out with my finger. So like these gaps right here are what I'm talking about. So this board didn't sit completely flush to the plywood, so there's a little gap here. When I put paint over it, it's gonna look really messy. So the whole point of caulk is to like fill in these gaps so that your paint goes on nice and smooth and everything looks pretty seamless. The most annoying thing about caulk is that even the fast drying stuff still takes forever to dry, especially in cold temperatures, but you wanna make sure to let it dry well before painting. I'm not like a paint snob or anything, but I personally just like Sherwin-Williams paint and my friend chose this color, so that's what I got. I 
I apply paint just like primer. I brush first, then roll. I let the first coat dry to the touch, then applied a second one and it covered really well. Sometimes I have to do a third coat, but thankfully this was good after just two. The next day, after it was completely dry, I applied some clear coat using a brush to the insides of the bench. I applied three coats, just sanding lightly between each one. And while that was drying, I brought the bench seat back out and applied iron on edge banding to the front and exposed side. Edge banding is always an optional step, but it makes it look a little cleaner, so I like to add it. Then I carefully placed this onto the bench and just kind of tapped it back so that it was flush to the back panel. Since the left side here is going against a wall, I made sure not to leave any overhang on that side so that it will sit flush. Then I used some one and a quarter inch screws through the top supports on the inside of the bench to secure it. That's kind of challenging to capture on camera since it's on the inside of a small space, so just kind of use your imagination here. <laughs> I applied three coats of clear coat to the bench seat to seal it just like I did the inside of the bench. And I also added some simple wooden hooks that my friend had given me to use with this. And at this point it was finished and ready to be installed in her house. This can certainly stand alone, but I would actually recommend using a few screws through the back panel to secure it to the wall studs behind it just so that it doesn't like move or tilt. I'm so happy with how this turned out and I really hope you enjoyed watching it come together. Don't forget to grab the plans linked below, and if you can't wait to see the latest projects, be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!